stay right where you are. I have what you're looking for. Looking for adrenaline, looking for highlight reels, looking for KO, submission, fantastic skills. So take a seat and let me take care of it. Let's go. What's up fighting fans? Tips from the Fight IQ channel. Today we're coming back for another episode of the Fight IQ show. You know the drill. I will start by ranking the top five fights that happened last weekend tell you why you should check the replay. To make this ranking, I base my opinion on this criteria. Excitement, the duration of the fight, the opposition level, and the way to finish the fight. After that, I'll be picking the top 5 fights to watch next weekend. No small talk, and let's dig in! This week we had the UFC Fight Night, the Cage Warriors 161, and the Janibek vs. Gualtieri boxing card. Number 5. Jonathan Martinez vs. Adrian Yanez. It was a fight in the main card of the UFC Fight Night. I think Yanez started the fight on a really good basis. Uh, he had a good game plan, which was to be light on his feet, going in and out to avoid any counter punches, and sending powerful right hands. While Martinez at the beginning was more trying to frame him against the cage and control the distance. But soon after the beginning of the fight, Martinez was sending huge inside leg kicks to Adrian Yanez's front leg. Martinez was fighting southpaw, which was a huge problem for Yanez as he was shooting hard inside his front leg, annihilate his movement and negate his speed advantage. Halfway through the first round, Martinez was doing a lot of damage to Yanez's leg. Uh, this one had a hard time stayed on his feet, to be honest. He was trying to counter that by swinging huge punches, but he didn't have a lot of success with that. And at some point, he even fell on the ground, and yeah, Martinez was letting him get up again to continue the punishment. He finished the round though, but yeah, I could go on and on, but we can resume the fight that way. Martinez focusing Yanez's leg and putting him out of the fight. I'm actually a bit surprised that Yanez never adapted to this. He never tried to switch stances. He never tried to grapple in order to yeah, cut the distance and avoid to be at a shooting distance. I hope he will come back stronger, but yeah, Martinez was better and Martinez keeps climbing the ranking of the Bantamweight division. I can't wait to see him fight again. Number 4. Chris Gutierrez vs Alatang Haley. It was a fight in the prelims of the UFC Fight Night. It's a bit similar to the previous fight, and I think Gutierrez being a teammate for Martinez, it can be explained that way. What I liked about this fight was the variety of kicks from Gutierrez. He was sending everything, like low kicks, middle kicks, high kicks, front kicks, spinning kicks even. <laughs> he was always switching stances, he was using his range to control the fight, he was always in movement, fighting from the outside, really like that. Alatang Haley didn't give up, he was doing a good job at putting pressure on Gutierrez, but he was always one step behind. All the kicking from Gutierrez did the job, did a lot of damage. By the end of the second round, Alatang Haley left calf was completely destroyed. Never gave up though, he kept going after Gutierrez, kept swinging punches. But yeah, that, that was not enough, unfortunately for him. The damage was already done by Gutierrez. He stayed on the outside, he kept moving and kicking Alatang Haley during the fight. So overall, great performance from Gutierrez, who stayed really elusive, he never slowed down. Even in the third round, he kept doing his, his game plan. That was quite amazing to see, to be honest. But good warrior spirit from Alatang Haley, who never gave up and went the distance, taking all those kicks, having his legs completely destroyed. But yeah, he finished the fight. Amazing also from Alatang Haley. I can't wait to see Chris Gutierrez fight again, to be honest. That was awesome what he did. And I think that's a really spectacular type of striking. Number 3, Shanibek Alim Khanuli vs Vincenzo Gualtieri. It was for the WBO and IBF middleweight titles. I think this fight is a great display of what mastering boxing fundamentals can do at a high level. I will not break down the fight run by run. I think it's more useful to look at the global performance from Janibek. I fought the perfect fight, flawless performance, really disciplined, following the game plan which was being the most active fighter, using his jab constantly in order to control the distance, using his beautiful footwork to go in and out and to circle toward uh, Gualtieri. Also, stabbing Gualtieri with powerful direct from the left hand and uh, uppercut when he could. I really didn't understand Gualtieri's game plan. He was having his, lo his guard really low, like trying to bait Jani back to hit him, but having the speed disadvantage that could never work. So he was getting slaughtered. During the fight, he absorbed a lot of shots and a lot of damage. And at the sixth round, the referee stepped in in order to stop the fight. The first time that Gualtieri is being stopped in his career, and Janibek is now having two belts, the WBO and the IBF, 
showing to the world that he's definitely one of the best. Amazing performance from Jenny Beck. I think he's one of the best elegant fighter to watch, to be honest. So go watch that fight. It's worth your while. Number two, Christian Rodriguez versus Cameron Simon. It was a fight in the UFC Fight Night on the main card, and it was amazing on a technical point of view. The fight started on good bases, technical striking from both fighters, great exchanges, but Simon made the first mistake. He got a bit carried away after receiving a spinning back fist from Rodriguez. He tried to replicate the exact same shot and Rodriguez took him down. I think it can be granted to the young age of Simon. That's a young man mistake. You want to show that you can also do something, get back at your opponents and he got taken down. Of course, with his great grappling, he could get out of there and get back on his feet. But I think that uh, scored some points in the eye of the judges. And I think he knew that because in the second round, he tried to get back at Rodriguez in the grappling department. He tried to take him down. This takedown attempt was quite sloppy and he got reversed. But then we got a complete showcase of grappling skills. It was amazing. Really fluid grappling, not forcing anything. Both fighters got the dominant position at some point. A lot of reversal. Yeah, two submission attempts from Rodriguez, one from Simon. This second round was wild. Even wilder was the third round where Simon gave everything he had. He must have felt behind, so he gave everything he had. But yeah, that was still technical striking, so great to see. Rodriguez was less active in the third round, but he was still able to answer the punches from Simon. And he even took Simon down, but this one quickly got up. At the end of the fight, Rodriguez got the win via unanimous decision. I agree with the decision, but I do not agree with the score. I think uh, yeah, two judges scored the fight 30-27, which means Rodriguez won three rounds, and I'm not agreeing with that. I think Simon got, got one round, but it was, of course, a close fight, so hard to judge. Anyway, it was a great fight, beautiful display of a whole MMA skill set, and I can't wait to see those two fights again. And number one, Sadiq Yusuf versus Edson Barbosa. The main event of the UFC fight night, and guys, it was a complete war. In the first round, Sadiq Yusuf started really strong. He was delivering powerful right hands, like basic but strong combos, one, two, in the face of Barbosa, doing a lot of damage. He almost put Barbosa out of the fight. He was really wobbly, looking that he was maybe not even there anymore. The referee was even so close to step in, I thought this fight would be stopped. Barbosa survived and Yusuf made a mistake in my opinion, which was take the fight to the ground. Uh, that allowed Barbosa to survive. Barbosa even had the opportunity to try submission attempts at the end of the first round. Of course he couldn't finish it, but he made it through the first round. The second round was closer, Barbosa was very active, he was messing with uh, Yusuf's rhythm. But Yusuf was still looking to deliver heavy shots, but he started to get tired, kind of slowed down and uh, was trying to wrestle against the cage. The last minute and a half of the second round, Barbosa was clearly the most dangerous fighter. His striking was great, his shots were really accurate, even though Yusuf was still able to counter him and touch him. And comes the third round, the most amazing round of this fight in my opinion. Beautiful bodywork from Edson Barbosa using punches and middle kicks, also controlling the pace of the fight, putting a lot of pressure on Sodik Yusuf and forcing him to fight on his heels. One minute before the end of the third round, Barbosa sent a spinning heel kick to Yusuf. It was really wobbly, he even fell on the ground and Barbosa tried to finish him, couldn't get the job done. Fourth round was less intense, both fighters were really tired, but Barbosa was looking fresher than Yusuf. His head movement was quite good, he was still marching forward, using his jab and scoring the most significant strikes. But still in that round, Yusuf was still able to touch Barbosa a few times. He had good directs and he had interesting leg kicks. He was actually shooting from his back leg to the back leg of Barbosa. So it was quite interesting and I think he scored a lot of points with that. I had two, two rounds each at the end of the fourth, so the fifth round is really the one that determined for me the issue of, uh, of the fight. In the fifth round, Barbosa was more in control, more active, more accurate, he even got a takedown. In the fifth round, Barbosa was clearly in control. He was the most active fighter, the more accurate one. 
He even got a takedown. So I think, yeah, Yusuf mentally and physically was too tired and was not able to to fight back anymore. He was still in the fight, but Barbosa was clearly the winner of the fifth round. Huge comeback from Barbosa. He took so much damage, but never gave up and he came back on top. So that's an other life lesson. It must be hard to swallow for Yusuf, uh, but he's tough and he will come back. It's nice to see that Barbosa still had that dog in him and that's clearly the fight of the night, even the UFC said so, and that's the fight of the weekend and comeback of the year. So go watch that replay, guys. Also, to mention this week, the UFC Fight Night card was pretty good. Great performances. Uh, Misha Pereira got the win by KO after 1 minute and 6 seconds uh, versus Andre Petrovsky. Amazing punching power, and I think this weight class is better for him. Also, good fight between Jennifer Maya and Viviana Araujo. Close fight. We saw good grappling. We saw good striking. Really was an uh, entertaining fight. Araujo got the win via decision. So if you have time, you can also watch those performances. Not to forget, Darren Elkins, Terence McKinney and Melissa Dixon also had a good night at the UFC Fight Night. And if you have time, go get a rewind on that card. Also, Cage Warriors was cool. A lot of nice prospects. Remember, Cage Warriors is a good entrance to the UFC. A lot of prospects from Cage Warriors finish at UFC. Some names for you guys. Paul Hughes, Ewan Davis, Mason Jones, Jordi Bacchus. They all had a good night at Cage Warriors 161. They all won in a great fashion. If you have time, go watch that replay. And to finish, KSI vs Fury and uh, the Paul vs Dennis card. I didn't watch it, to be honest. I just saw on social media what happened. That's ridiculous for the sport. That's not real boxing. If you want to watch boxing and watch good fights, don't watch this because it's not boxing. It's only drama in and out of the ring and it's not a good advertising for the sport. For example, this weekend we had Tsu versus Mendoza for a belt in boxing. Really good fight. Davis versus Albright also on the card from uh, Jenny Beck versus Gualtieri was a good fight. I didn't put it in my top 5 because we had a great quality this week. Davis didn't finish Albright, as I previewed. Uh, he went to the distance but got the win by a decision. And we had also Burchild versus Ruiz, another boxing fight where Burchild, a former world champion, won via TKO in two rounds or something. Pretty amazing. That's boxing, guys. Go check those fights. And now the top 5 fights to watch next weekend. Number 5. Bruno Silva vs Sharabuddin Magomedov will be the first fight in the prelims of the UFC 294. Let me say something to you guys, this fight will not go to the distance. There is a huge KO ratio with these two fighters. Bruno Silva has 20 of his 23 wins by way of knockout. He is 4-3 inside the UFC, 4 wins via knockout, and he's on a bad streak since 2022. He's only 1-3. His last fight is a loss versus Brendan Allen via submission. So of course Brendan Allen is tough, but I would not be surprised if that's Silva's last chance in the UFC. A lot is at stake for Silva. Gomedov is a newcomer, that's his first fight at the UFC. You can see he's directly on the pay-per-view card, even if it's in the prelims, that's quite amazing. And defeated is 11-0, 10 wins by way of knockout. So yeah, quite an impressive record. I expect to win by KO from Magomedov. I think it will be a highlight real finish and it might be a performance of the night for Magomedov. Number 4, Katero vs. Jorge Linares, the WBA Intercontinental Super Lightweight Belt. Might not be the cleanest boxing fight, but it will be for sure entertaining. Katero is 27-1, 13 wins by Wolf Knockout, is a really aggressive fighter. He's a southpaw, he likes to fight at close range where he can unleash heavy body shots and he has also a powerful direct from the left hand. He also usually likes to corner his opponent in the ropes and then go crazy on them. <laughs> he will face Jorge Linares, tough and dangerous fighter even as he grows older. He's 47 and 8, 29 wins by way of knockouts, more than 60% of his wins. He fought the very best, Lomachenko, Anthony Krola, David Haney, etc guys. He's not afraid to go into a brawl, he has fast hands, he has heavy counter punches and he can take a lot of damage. I will still give an edge to Caderol because I think the younger fighter always have an advantage in that kind of dog fights. I wouldn't be surprised if the fight goes to the distance because Linares is really difficult to get rid of and he will give you punches for punches. Number 3. Magomedan Kalaev vs Johnny Walker. 
It's a fight in the main card of the UFC 294. It's an interesting matchup if you ask me. Ankalaev used to be the boogeyman of the light heavyweight division. The record of 9 win, 1 loss and 1 draw at the UFC. His only loss was against Paul Craig in his first match in the organization, but then he avenged that loss later. After that loss, he went into a 9 fight win streak, finally getting a draw versus Jan Blachowicz in December from 2022. That fight was qualified as boring by a lot of people. Akalaev felt robbed, he thought that he won. He said it in the post-fight interview and he even mentioned that he might leave the UFC after that, uh, that fight. Since then we didn't hear much from him, but he's finally back. To face him will be Johnny Walker, interesting trajectory also. He used to be this new prospect getting a contract from the Dana White Contender Series in 2018. Right after that he got three wins in a row with early and spectacular finishes, but then he fell from grace. One and four between November from 2019 and February of 2022. Two loss by KO, including a highlight finish from Jamal Hill. But then he succeeded to put his career back on track. Three fight win streak with two finishes. Kalaev is clearly the favorite, but yeah, Johnny Walker likes to make the odds lie. I'm gonna side with Walker by KO, but it's gonna be tough because nobody ever knocked out on Kalaev. Number two, Maru Usman versus Hamza Chimaev. It's the co-main event of the UFC 294. This fight would have been number one in my top five any other week. It might even be legendary. It was first supposed to be a grudge match between Paulo Costa and Hamza Chimaev, but Costa had to pull out of the fight due to an injury. Usman decided to step in on a 10 days notice and I think the fight is even better now. Usman is a future Hall of Famer, is in the UFC since 2015 after getting a contract by winning the Ultimate Fighter 21. He then washed the entire welterweight division. He was on an 8 fight win streak before getting a title fight versus Tyron Woodley. He won that fight and then defended it 5 times versus the best contender in the world. He then lost versus Leon Edwards. He tried to win it back but he lost again in the rematch via decision last March. Since then he didn't fight and he is now moving up into the middleweight division. He didn't hesitate to fight Shimaev one way class above on 10 days notice. I think that's completely badass guys. And now Shimaev. He was seen as the next big thing in MMA when he was entering the UFC. He said that he wanted to be champ in two dif different weight class. He fought also in two different weight class, welterweight and middleweight. He's undefeated, he's 6-0 inside the UFC, 5 finishes, 1 decision versus Gilbert Burns, which is one of the toughest contender in the welterweight division. He was not as active as he wanted to because he had a lot of fights that were cancelled and he even complained about it because, of course, he is young and he wanted to fight as much as possible. He was preparing for a grudge match versus Costa and he is now facing his toughest challenge on 10 days notice. By the way, Dana White mentioned that the winner of this fight will get the next title shot at middleweight, so that makes the fight even bigger. Difficult to say who wins, uh, I go with Shimaev if I really have to choose. Good in that weight class, is younger, is a great wrestler, but do not underestimate Kamal Usman. And number one, Islam Mahachev versus Alexander Volkanovsky. Main event of the UFC 294 for the lightweight championship. It's the best fight of the week for sure and potentially the best fight of the year. Originally Mahachev was supposed to fight Charles Oliveira in the rematch for the lightweight championship, but Oliveira had to pull out of uh, this fight due to an injury. And, like Usman, Volkanovski decided to step in on a 10 days notice. I think this fight is even better now. Uh, it's a long-awaited rematch because the first fight ended in a controversial way because Mahachev got the win via decision. But a lot of people would have given the win to Volkanovski. Islam is on 12 fights win streak with 8 finishes and he completely dominated the lightweight division with his great wrestling. Volkanovski's only loss inside the UFC is versus Islam Mahachev. He said that he's determined to avenge it. He promised a finish and he promised to be a double champ by getting the lightweight belt. He's two of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. Champion versus champion. We don't get that often. It's really crazy, guys. We really lucky with that one. During the first fight, we saw that Volk could cause a lot of problems to Mahachev with his great striking, good power, even coming from weight class below. But Mahachev wants to make a statement. He wants to show his dominance. He will look for a finish too, I'm sure of it. My heart wants to choose Volkanovski, but I think it's really hard to beat someone like Mahachev without a full training camp. 
to be realistic, I'd say Mahachev via decision. I will maybe change my mind before the fight and say Wolf via KO. But yeah. Anyway, you cannot miss that fight, guys. That's the fight of the year. Also, Friday Fights is coming back with the one Friday Fights 37 on October 20th. So, Muay Thai lovers, don't miss that one. But that was it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If that's the case, please give a hard punch to that subscribe button to be aware of any new releases. Also, let me know in the comment what you thought about the crazy fights we had last weekend and give me your pronouns for the coming bangers. Next week will come a new fight IQ unplugged with a highly skilled and experienced fighter. So stay tuned. Enjoy the fight guys. I'll see you next week.